Ashe. So throughout this presentation, you're going to hear me saying Ashe, and I want you guys to say Ashe. Ashe? Ashe. I said Ashe? Ashe. All right, so before I start, give it up for the Divine D for putting together this incredible. I'm blessed to be here. Um, before I get into my full presentation, um, I was thinking about, I was driving from uh, Southeast Missouri about eight hours to come here, and I was thinking about, like, what, what message can I give to Milwaukee? Like, my city. Like, I'm bred from this city. And without this city, I wouldn't be who I was and who I am. So before I come up here and make you guys feel good, I want to give you guys an opportunity to get to know me a little bit more because my testimony is an inspiration to others. And if I can do it, then you can do it. Ashe? Ashe. All right. This is me as a kid, 60 years old. And at that time, I realized I was different. Just like a lot of us. We have something within inside of ourselves that we know and we realize is different from anything else out there in the world. And I, at that young age with my little coochie sweater, um, I realized that I was a creative individual. My father was an art teacher named Mr. Baba at the Boys and Girls Club in Hillside Projects. And it was the first time I seen art and creativity have an opportunity to be able to change lives, especially with young people. So through all my journey, I've been blessed enough to travel the country, do some incredible things, see some incredible people, I'm do it. there we go, and been blessed enough to be able to have great people into my life. People like Devon, great mentors, and when he asked me to come on this stage, I wanted to give a little piece of myself to you guys. I Ashe? Ashe. So again, my dad, his name is Bob Cole, you might see him out there, you can say what's up Pops, when you see him. But my mom also, it's always been a strong woman in my life. So a lot of times when I start my presentations, I dedicate my presentations to two people in my life that really inspire me. My mom passed when I was 12 years old and I had to make a decision real quick in life if I was gonna allow my life to be built around statistics or if I was gonna be able to fight and be strong. And my mother became my wife. She became, gave me an opportunity and gave me a reason to keep pushing every day. So I'm the oldest out of five children. We all got dashikis on. My father always raised us to understand how culture gives us confidence. So when I wear my African gear, when we do the prayers and do the ashes, that is the thing that represents to our ancestors that we haven't forgot them. Because we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Ashe? Ashe. I said Ashe. Ashe. So this is my sister Omotayo. She passed away four years ago. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy when she was three years old, and they told my father that she wasn't, she wasn't gonna live past five. So I dedicate this presentation to her, and we're gonna do a, a moment of silence, but I want you to reflect on other individuals that you might have you lost this year or lost in, in life, period. Reflect on the good feelings and the good thoughts and the good passion and the good ideas and the good love that these people have been able to inspire in your life. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a small moment of, uh, of silence to give love, give thanks, give appreciation to the ones who came before us. I said. So, 80s baby, grew up watching your MTV raps, grew up watching Fresh Prince, grew up watching and being inspired by hip hop. And as a kid, I wanted to make money. Because I realized that where I grew up on 33rd and Brown, if I didn't figure out a way to hustle, if I didn't figure out a way to be able to use my talent and my skill, I was gonna be dead or in jail. So hip hop gave me an opportunity to inspire. And I was a kid, airbrushing t-shirts. And I remember going to the, I don't know if y'all remember, the Capitol Court Mall. How many of y'all remember the Capitol Court Mall? Some of y'all young bucks, I'm like, Capitol Court Mall, what are you talking about? So Capitol Court Mall, I was the kid that would go to Capitol Court Mall every, almost every day to go see the guy in their airbrushing t-shirts. Yeah. Because this is something that I wanted to do. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but this was, became my passion. And I remember going up to this guy, having my portfolio and showing him my art. Just like sometimes in life, you're gonna deal with pain, you're gonna deal with rejection. I had my little portfolio, I showed him, I said, man, I wanna learn how to do this. He looked at my portfolio and he said, I ain't got no time to be babysitting nobody's kid. And I had to make a decision. 
Because you're going to have haters like Devon was saying. You're going to have people that's going to try to stop you. You're going to have family members that are going to stop you from your dream and your visions. But what you got to understand in, your, in life that that's not their dream. That that's your dream. So it's your responsibility to find a reason to keep pushing. I said, I said, I said. I said. So as I started to grow, I realized that a lot of my time and a lot of my energy was built around trying to survive. Milwaukee can be deadly. Sometimes when I have to come back here, I have to have my cloak and my little shield on just to be able to protect my spirit because our people are here suffering, right? right. So when I look at you guys, the ones who, who are making the investment to be able to show up today, give yourselves an applause because there's a whole lot of reasons why you couldn't show up today. There's a whole lot of people who, who paid for tickets and didn't even show up. So you guys just showing up sometimes, that's all you need to know. Sometimes you don't know that your business partner, the next moves you're getting ready to make in business can be sitting right next to you. Yeah. And I did, look how many people didn't show up. So thank you guys for showing up. Give yourselves another round of applause. And I'm very passionate about people who don't waste my time. I say? So throughout my journey, I found myself homeless. My mom always supported my art, but she had one rule. You can paint on your kid, your brothers and sister clothes, you can paint on your stuff, but don't you paint on no walls in my house. Right? right? She had a whole attitude and everything. So around 14 years old, it's a thing called a rice of passage, specifically for young black men and young men. And my mom realized that at 14, she couldn't tell me nothing. My mom and my dad went through a divorce at a young age and I feel like that was my, my I, I, I carry that. I feel like that when they went through that divorce, some of that problem, some of the issues, whatever was going on in that life, some of that had to do with me. And I carried a lot of that pain with me just like some of us carry that pain with us to this day. I say? So part of this is gonna be about inspiration and I'm gonna share some tools of success that's been able to help me grow and build my life and my career because I love y'all. When I see y'all, I see myself. When I see y'all, I see a mirror. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna pour everything that I possibly got. I say? I say. So throughout my transition, I thought I was slick. One day, I'm watching Young MTV raps, I'm feeling myself, and my little hip hop name, my little tagger name was Chaos, right? Don't tweet this, don't, don't put that out there, right? So I was feeling myself, and I decided to tag my name in the basement, on the wall. Now you know what my mama's number one, what was her number one rule? Don't you write on no walls in my house. So I come in after school, give my mom, my mom a little kiss. And one of the things that my mom showed me and taught me is how to be able to care for others. Meaning like, it wouldn't be unusual for other people in our community, friends, families that were going through problems, that would come to our house, my mom would cook, they had kids, people would come stay at night. So this one specific day my mom was cooking. Hey, mom, what's up? I come home from school. Try to give my little kids. And she said, now go up to your room. So I go up to my room and I see some bags. Some luggage. Oh, somebody's staying the night. Oh, great. Who's staying the night, mom? She's like, uh-uh, chaos. <laughs> chaos. Who, who chaos? Yeah, chaos. You tagged on my wall. And I'm sending you to go live with your father. And she sent me to go live with my dad, and my dad has been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life. And I remember getting out of the car, and we pulled up into this abandoned building. I remember asking my dad that night, we slept on the floor. No electricity, no running water, no heat. And I remember asking my dad, like, Dad, like, what happened? We went from, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money, but we was able to at least keep ahead of our, or uh, keep, keep ahead Keep a house, a roof over. A roof. Oh, you sound like my mama. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but my dad told me he said, "This is what men and this is what life is about, son. Sometimes you gonna go through the ups and you gotta be able to deal with the downs as well. We lived in this abandoned building for three years. No electricity, no running water, no heat. We used to sleep on that floor." I used to, on a bundle of, uh, on a cot that my dad had made, 
we had a kerosene heater that we used to use to keep warm. So I would go to school and all the kids would, I would, I would get teased because all of my clothes smelled like kerosene. They used to call me gas boy. <laughs> you know, kids don't know the difference between gas and kerosene. They smell like gas boy. So I remember one of the things that happened is, is I had great mentors around. My father always had me aligned up with other entrepreneurs. And I made my first hundred dollars on the street corner right here, airbrushing t-shirts. On one end of the block, my homies that was selling crack cocaine. On the other end of the block, I was slanging t-shirts. And this right here started my whole entrepreneurial journey because it gave me value. Write this down. What is your value? If you don't understand your value, somebody else is gonna tell you what your value is. I learned my value at 14 years old, hustling on the street corner because I needed to feed my brother while my dad was working at the corner store. The grind sometimes of not being able to have the things that you need in life builds up your self-esteem so your value builds as you grow in life, right? Because a diamond is not a diamond without starting off with a coal, right? And the pressure creates, the pressure creates that diamond, I say? So my father worked at this corner store. My dad had been an 